Today I delve deep down the daunting rabbit hole of small split mechanical keyboards as I build and use a Ferris sweep. So join me as I go from this to this and from an abysmal typing speed to something hopefully a bit more respectable. When it comes to custom split keyboards, I've always been of the belief that there's a certain size threshold where if you go too small, you start trading out too much functionality for the sake of form. Now, you could start big with something like the Ergo Done or Ergo Done, however it's pronounced, where you have as many keys as you could possibly need. Or you can go a step down to the Lily 58 or the Soffle, which is about my comfort zone, which you can use practically with only two layers. Then you can take a step down again to the Korn, a very popular keyboard, but personally I've never been able to live without a number row. And you can go even further beyond to the Ferris Sweep or other 34 4 key keyboards, where you're going to need three or four layers to be able to use optimally. And if you wanted to, you can go even smaller to the land of 18 and 16 key keyboards. Now, unless my English teacher was a big fat liar, I've always believed that there are 26 letters in the alphabet. Which means if you want to type on something with 16 or 18 keys, you're going to have to use a lot of layer shenanigans just to be able to even use it properly. And I have stubbornly stuck to those beliefs for several years, never going any smaller than a Lily 58 or a Soffle, due to the idea that if I were to go smaller than that, I'd be sacrificing my ability to type purely for aesthetics. But the other night I went down a Ben Balak rabbit hole, and he speaks very positively about the idea of experimenting, trying to use the smallest keyboard you can to reduce the amount of finger movement when typing. And he has inspired me inspired me to try and prove myself wrong. I'm going to build up my own Ferris sweep and I'm going to force myself to use it and practice on it until I can hit a respectable words per minute score. And then and only then will I form my final opinion on whether I think small split keyboards are just for looking good or whether they actually can provide an optimal typing experience. So let's get on with it. So first things first, we need to actually build the Ferris sweep. Now this isn't going to be a build guide. I am the least qualified person in this office to be doing a build guide. A combination of very shaky hands and bad eyesight means I'm never doing any of the soldering. But I think I can figure this out. I'm not a complete idiot. Now, what is this thing? Some kind of face scratcher? The best thing about the Ferris sweep is just how easy it is to build. And that's because it doesn't have any diodes. To me at least, diodes are the worst part of soldering. They're the most fiddly and they take up the most amount of time. The Ferris sweep doesn't need any, and I believe that's because it has so few keys. With each half only having 17 keys, there's enough pinouts or sockets or whatever you call them on the controller that each key has its own socket. At least that's my very basic understanding of the situation. Uh, if you know better, please let me know in the comments. But all you need to do to build your Ferris sweep is test and flash your controllers, solder in the TRS sockets, push your switches into the plate, push the plate into the PCB, solder in the controller legs, solder on the controller, solder in the switches, put it in a case, put some feet on the case, put your keycaps on the case, and Bob's your uncle, you have a Ferris sweep. Now I was originally going to put blank keycaps on this thing, but I realised if I want to give myself the best chance of actually getting used to using this, I should probably go for some legend keycaps. And I went for the white on black because I think it has a very nice striking look to it. We're also using a 3D printed case instead of the plate case because we just recently designed one and I wanted to give it a try. So there you are, here is the finished product. I think it looks pretty good. Now let's see if I can actually use it. So I've done no practice on this, uh, I'm going in blind. I have just double checked the key map file and checked where you know some of the layers and uh, modifier keys are. Um, the backspace is in a completely different place to my usual backspace, so that's probably going to be problematic, but let's give this a go. Oh, that's... I accidentally restarted it. Well, let's try again. Oh dear. Okay, 32 words per minute. That is pretty slow, but it is day one. I'm going to keep practicing over the weekend and see if I can speed this up. So, it is day two. Uh, I had a wild Friday night of practicing typing and playing Hearthstone Battlegrounds, because I'm a party animal. 
and uh, I'm happy with the progress I've made. There was some issue with the T key, accidentally pressing, uh, firing two or three times on each press. Turns out it was just a dodgy solder joint, so I just reflowed the solder and it's working fine. Now, let's see if I've made any improvement. So many words per minute. I'm reasonably happy with that. It's not as fast as I'd like to be, but it's fast enough that I could, you know, use it to write emails and to work with. One problem is that this isn't an accurate, you know, test for actually typing. There's no punctuation, no capitalization, no numbers, and I still really struggle with those things. So I'm going to take it away for a few more days. I'm going to keep practicing, keep learning, and see if I can turn this into something that I could actually use for work and productivity. So it's been a few weeks since the last recordings. Uh, that's because something interesting happened. Now, I took the first sweep home as planned and I carried on practicing with it, but I started getting quite frustrated. A lot of the keys were in positions that I didn't agree with and didn't make a lot of sense to me, but I had endeavored to use the default uh, key map file for the Ferris sweep because I figured whoever created the default file, they probably knew the Ferris sweep better than I did. Therefore, they knew all the best positions for everything, right? Then I realized how stupid that was. The best part of a customizable keyboard is customizing it, is being able to change it to better suit your needs and your uses. So I loaded up VIA and I just started changing things. And that's when it really clicked. Almost instantly, it went from a really frustrating learning experience to a really rewarding one. Um, if there was ever a key in a position that I didn't like, I would just move it to somewhere that made more sense to me. And that's when I started to really unlock the power of the Ferris sweep. Not only that, I started really enjoying using it. So I decided I was gonna delay the ending to this video and just start using it as my daily driver for a few weeks. That way I could give the best conclusion possible. Now I need to do a few more typing tests. I'm not gonna make you watch more typing tests. I'll just show you the ending to them. Um, as you see on just a raw typing test, I'm up to hundred words per minute and with punctuation and capitalization, I can do about 90 words per minute. I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I'm gonna get faster, I'm gonna keep practicing, but that's fast enough that I can use it without it really hindering me at all. So the conclusion. With the keyboard as small as the Ferris sweep, are you sacrificing functionality for the sake of form? A little bit, much less than I was expecting, to be honest. Now, there's no getting around it. You are going to have some keys that are going to have to be three key presses away. You know, they're going to have to be either layer, shift, and then the press, or layer, layer, and then the press. But you can mitigate that and reduce that by moving all the things you use regularly and you need regularly to more comfortable and convenient positions. I will give you an example. So on the default firmware for the Ferris sweep, for left and right bracket, you would have to do little finger, thumb, and then uh, ring finger or pinky finger. Now, I use brackets so often that that was really convoluted and it was slowing me down and tripping me up. So I moved it. Now, my left and right bracket is just thumb, uh, index finger, and thumb, middle finger. And that is so easy that it's actually easier than, you know, even a standard 60% keyboard. It, I don't have to move my fingers to do that. And there's so many examples like that where if you're going to be using a, a key regularly, you can move it to somewhere that is so simple and so easy to use that when you combine that with how little you have to move your fingers on this thing, seriously, like on a chalk version, you have to move maybe one and a half centimeters at most, apart from your index finger, and you can reach almost any key you want. When you combine those two things, it's a really fluid and fast typing experience. And when you are at the high words per minute without having to move your fingers barely anywhere, you are flying and it's so fun. There has been one other surprise from using the Ferris sweep and that is my pinkies, my little fingers. I didn't realize just how useless little fingers are and how often you're actually using them on a standard keyboard or even more often on a bigger split keyboard. And I also didn't realize just how uncomfortable it is having to regularly move them out to that outer row. Um, using them on the Ferris sweep, very comfortable. Like you only move them a little bit up and a little bit down. And if I now had to go back to a bigger keyboard, I would be very aware of how much I'm using my little finger, how much I'm stretching out to that outer row and how uncomfortable that is. So that is the Ferris sweep. I think I'm gonna keep using it. It's incredibly enjoyable, incredibly comfortable. When you're really typing fast and you're flying with it, having to move your fingers barely at all, it's a really good feeling. Um, I'm going to build myself up a wireless one because 
I take it to the office and I take it home. And if I forget the TRS cable somewhere, then I can't really use it. So I'm gonna build up a wireless one um, and I'm gonna just keep on using it. If you'd like a Ferris sweep as well, I'm gonna put a 10% discount code down on our store if you wanna buy one from us. Um, it'll apply to any basket with a Ferris sweep in it. And I think that's it for this video. Uh, if you'd like to see me do this kind of video for another keyboard, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can get around to it. Uh, that is all for this time. Thank you. Bye.